Good morning everyone. Um, happy Thirsty Thursday. Um, so why are we here? We're here for two reasons. Um, one of them, most importantly, I've got this beauty to trial. Um, it's not a wild swan uh, from Thornbridge. It is actually the Russian Imperial Stout as brewed by homebrew Chris, Chris Aston. So I'm going to be trying that a little bit later. Um, but first things first, I want to apologise to anyone who has been watching my channel. There hasn't been anything much on it recently. Um, and that's something that I want to try and rectify. Um, I don't know if people saw uh, Rusty Homebrew's video recently where he said that goodbye to uh, YouTube. He hadn't got the time um, or probably the inclination to carry on doing the videos for the moment. I have felt like that. Um, my problem isn't necessarily doing the videos, it's doing the editing and getting it all up. So my point is that I want to do some quicker, easier videos, show you some footage from brew days, tell you what I'm brewing, tell you about updates, do some things like that. Um, but I want to try and get some more footage on so that you guys, you know, I'm, I'm contributing back to YouTube, that's what I want to do. I've got a lot out of YouTube. Um, I enjoy watching the videos of other guys. Um, and I, you know, I want to put some stuff back and I think it's only right to. Um, I think YouTube, Brewtube is a, a great thing um, and I want to, to carry on. I'm still carrying on, I'm brewing whatever happens, but uh, I want to try and get more videos up. So apologies to anyone watching the, or has been watching the channel, they'll be there. The other thing is, you probably, possibly might be able to tell from my voice, I've got a cold. I've had one for about two weeks, I haven't been able to shake it, but I um, feel like I'm on the mend now. So uh, hopefully, touch wood, um, that'll be uh, better soon. So again, apologies. Um, I'll try and get some more stuff up. I've got some brew footage from the um, American Pale Ale that I brewed uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, I might try and get some of that up. Um, what else I've got at the moment, I've got in the fermentation fridge at the moment, is my smash beer. I took a reading from that last night um, and it was still at 10.20. So obviously I didn't want to, I didn't want to dry hop yet, I've got to dry hop it. I've got to wait until it gets down to, you know, 10.10 or so. Um, so I took it out, I've used uh, SO5 on it. Um, took it out, gave it a good old rousing, put it back, and there seems to be quite a bit more activity over the last day or so. Um, I've just whacked the temperature up a little bit in the firm fridge to see if that just gives it its final kick to get it over the edge to try and get to 10.10. There is loads of yeast on the top of it. When I, I should really probably crop, uh, crop top it, um, there was so much there. When I take my um, samples for doing the gravity readings, I use one of those turkey based uh, things from Wilco's and you know sanitize it all beforehand when I got it in pull it out it's absolutely covered in yeast um, so there's still some activity still some action happening there um, so I'm happyish to leave it for till the weekend probably or till maybe tomorrow night um, because I've got to get it done eventually because um, I think we're meant to be sending the competition entry in the beginning of March so you know time is, is sort of running out so uh, so anyway so that's in the fridge at the moment um, probably dry hop it tomorrow um, not this weekend but the weekend after I'm probably going to be brewing my own Russian Imperial Stout which is why this beer review is going to be particularly interesting um, want to brew the stout it's from the Bible, um, really, really interested to do it. First time I've ever done a stout. I've done a couple of porters, um, done a brown ale, um, but I've never done a, a stout before. Um, I'm hopefully catching up with Adam Walker, um, Adam Baldy, tomorrow, if he's still around, um, and I'll tap him up on a few ideas on what I should do with it, because I know that he's brewed it, brewed it before, and he really, really rates it and says that he's brewed stout since and he always uses that Bible recipe as his base recipe. I'm following it exactly to the letter of the law, exactly to how it is in the book, apart from the fact that I've upped the grains a little bit purely because my 
um, use the Buffalo boiler and I found I have quite a large sort of um, dead space at the bottom um, and also I have quite a vigorous boil off on it so to collect 23 litres, 22, 23 litres at the end I usually have to collect 20, uh, sorry, about 31 litres of water to begin with so it's slightly more than what the Bible suggests to get the end result so what I've done is I've just marginally upped the um, the grains a little bit, only, only by, by a small amount, just to get to the try and keep the same level of um, uh, of ABV. Um, so, so yeah, so I played around with that, got to where I want to be. I don't know if anyone else did, but I found this particularly brilliant. This is. Here, this um, spreadsheet, it's created by um, Larry, off of, whoa, fucking hell, created by Larry off of Beer and Barbecue Larry. Um, if you go onto his site, I might just put a link actually, if you go onto his YouTube, Rootube site, he has a link that shows you where to get this spreadsheet from. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, it's really helped me a lot um, to really understand what's going on. It's essentially, it's Beersmith in Excel spreadsheet form. But what really interests me with it and what I really like about it is you can, uh, you really, I, it's really helped me understand exactly what's going on sort of under the bonnet, if you like. Um, and now I find that I can tweak things really easily. So this, for example, tweaking the grains to get to my correct ABV that I want I found it really, really simple to do it. Um, and it's just, you know, there's all the formulas, you can see them all in here, and it's a really interesting way to, to get to, to where you're doing. Um, I've got Beersmith, excuse me. <coughs> I have got Beersmith, but you kind of, when I was using it, I'm like, well, what, what's going on? If I do this, what's really happening? And I may go back to Beersmith and start using it again, but hopefully I'll understand a bit more about exactly what's happening under there by tweaking certain things, what the impact of that's going to be further on. So really interesting, really, really useful tool. And I say I'll put a link down to uh, down to where you can get hold of that, um, if you want to try it, obviously. Um, that's about it. Um, there's a few other updates. I'm not going to go on to it much more in this because I wanna, don't want to stay on for too long uh, and I want to get on to drinking some beer. Um, so this is the Russian Imperial Stout from Homebrew Chris. Again, I'll put a link. He showed a video on when he brewed it. Um, he did send me some notes. And in fact, if you bear with me a sec, I'm going to go and see if I can find them. No, notes have gone. So, sorry, apologies for that, Chris. Um, in fact, I've got to give you two apologies, mate. Number one is I lost the notes. Sorry about that. Number two is you sent me three beers. Um, you sent me this Russian Imperial Stout, you sent me Breakfast Stout, and you also sent me your um, Grapefruit IPA. Your Grapefruit IPA, I mistakenly drunk thinking it was something else without reviewing it. So I wanted to review it. Um, I apologise, Chris, um, but uh, I drank it. It was in the fridge with another bottle, and I drank your one thinking it was the other one. When I drank it, as soon as I started drinking it, I was like, that's not what I was thinking it was. And it was the, meant to be, I oh, forget it. I didn't review it, so apologies for that, mate. But anyway, let's crack on with this. This has been in the shed um, for a little while, so it's a little bit cold. I've had it in here for a bit, trying to warm it up. We even put it on a radiator for a little bit. Um, but it's still feeling a little bit cold, so hopefully that's not going to impact too much on the, uh, on the taste of it. Um, I do know... Good hiss, good hiss. A lovely bit of cannon smoke. You can see that coming out there. Really roasty smell. Now my smell isn't great at the moment because of my cold, but it, it, this is breaking through it. Oh, it's lovely. Really, really lovely. What I'm looking for with this is something dark and creamy and malty and just really kind of, you know, satisfying if you like. Um, the sort of thing you want 
on a sort of cold day like this. Now, I'm pretty sure you keg this, but we'll just have a look and make sure. Let's just have a look. Yeah, there's stuff at the bottom of that, so we'll leave that. Well, straight off the bat, let me get some light on behind me a sec, that's it. Just a little bit of extra light. <clears throat> well, the look of that is absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you're about to see. Completely dark. I've got some foam here. Um, so what I'll do... Let me... Just shine through here. You know, you're not getting anything at all through that whatsoever. Look, thick, dark, exactly what you want from a you know a great stout. Head, tiny little bubbles, a beautiful creamy cap. You, know, you can see that. Let's see if you can see that. Can you see that? I don't know how good that is. Beautiful creamy cap there. Tiny bubbles. Lovely colour. There's a, quite a sweet smell there, which I think is possibly, um, you know, some of the, the hops coming off, but it's a really fresh smell. Absolutely divine, so good. The mouthfeel is incredible. Just, just tingles on your tongue. Absolutely fantastic. It's got a real dark sort of licorice -y kind of taste. Really, really amazing. There's a sweetness at the back of your tongue that gets there. You've got you've got all of the, the characteristics of a, of, a, of a really strong, deep stout. It absolutely, as you drink it, the mouthfeel it just coats your tongue. Carbonation is really good. It's not too heavy. You get like that slight fizz um, when it goes onto your tongue, but it's not, you know, with me, <coughs> stouts, the darker beers for me, your stouts, your, um, uh, your, your well, not your black IPA to certain respect, but your certainly stouts and your porters really need just that low level of carbonation. It needs to be there to give you a nice head, helps you with the creaminess um, and the mouth feel. But, I've had so many commercial stouts, uh, porters actually in particular, that it's like drinking a Diet Coke or drinking a can of Coke or something like that. It, it was just, there's just too much fizz in it and it ruins the drink. This. It's got it straight on. It's got that initial maltiness that grabs hold of your tongue and sort of just goes, just gives it a squeeze. And, but when it gets back, that sweetness hits the back of your throat. That together they give it that kind of licorice -y kind of taste that is divine. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. I'm brewing one as I say in a couple of weeks time and 
I'm going to have to go back to your video and see exactly how you did this because getting that would be having a keg of this. I mean, just absolutely blows you away. So good. It's like it's almost a little bit of a little bit of cherry taste in there as well. Maybe stone fruits um, that I get. I don't know. I don't think you added anything to this. I don't usually like. Um, I'm not usually on one for to have like your bourbon stouts and whiskies and all that sort of thing aged in there. I'm not a massive whiskey drinker myself. If this had a tiny hit of it, it would take it for me personally. It really would take that well. Um, I don't think you did that. I don't think you did anything with it. But Chris, if not, mate, that's just drinks perfectly as it is. Absolutely perfectly. Really, really hope mine comes out like that. There's only one problem with this beer, and it's a big problem, and it's hard to buy another one. Um, so, yeah, <coughs> never mind. Onwards and upwards. So, again, there's going to be a bit more footage coming up. I'll try and get everything. Obviously, I'm going to try and get this footage up. After that, I might try and narrow down some of the brew day footage, so I'm not going to show you the same thing again and again and again, which was one of the things that Rusty um, put him off. He was like, you know, there's nothing really different happening. So I'll get I'll get the that definitely that footage up. I'll get this footage up, and um, we'll move forward, guys. Let's let's see if I can get this done, guys. Thank you very much. I'll uh, I'll be seeing you again soon. You put the beer in the coconut and drink it all up. You put the beer in the coconut and throw the can away.